Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Input Gamer. Today I have a very quick and casual lesson to teach you. Today's lesson is going to be on a bonus feature for our first person controller, and that is on how to create a cursor lock script. Now a cursor lock is a feature that allows your game to hide and lock the mouse cursor so that you don't see it and so that you don't accidentally click outside of your game. And this is a feature that's really only implemented in certain types of video games, such as first person shooters and car racing games. But if your game is a game that requires the mouse cursor in order to select things such as MMORPGs or RTSs, then you probably don't want to implement a cursor lock script in your game. But now that you know what a cursor lock is, let me show you how to create one. So here I have my first person project open inside of Unity and the first thing that we need to do is create a new input action file and to create this you can go to the create drop down menu and then down at the bottom select input action and I've just named this one to general input I've given it this name so that we can use it for this cursor lock feature which is kind of a general input thing but I have any other inputs for the game in general I'll be able to add them to this input action file and so now what we need to do is open this file by double clicking on it and it'll bring up this window here and here you can see I've created a new action map which I've called general controls I've also created a new action which is called cursor lock and I've set the key binding to the escape key now once we've created this input action file we need to save the asset and then generate a new C sharp script so over in the inspector we're going to select that and you're going to want to make sure that you pick a file location and then click apply. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new script so that we can read in our different inputs and so I've created this new cursor lock script and let's go ahead and open it up in Visual Studios. So once you have the script open inside Visual Studios the first thing that we need is to include the using unity engine dot input system namespace. We then need to inherit from our action map interface and so I have general input dot I general controls actions once we have this we need to create three new variables the first one is for our input action so this is a private general input and I've just called it general input our second one is a private bool called is cursor active and our last one is a private game object called escape menu which I've also made a serialized field once you have these variables created, the next thing that we need to do is create the callback function for our action map. And this is our on cursor lock callback function. And it matches the action in our input action file. Now you can also create this callback function by selecting the general input interface and then hold alt and press enter. And then there should be an option that says implement interface. Now inside this callback function we need to set our is cursor active variable to its inverse so we have is cursor active equals and then exclamation point is cursor active. We then need to set the visibility of our cursors so I have cursor dot visible and I set it equal to is cursor active. We then have an if statement where we're checking to see if our is cursor active variable equals false so I have this exclamation mark right here. Inside this if statement we want to set the lock state of our cursor so I have cursor dot lock state and I'm setting it equal to cursor lock mode dot lock because if our cursor is not active then we want our cursor to be locked as well then have an else statement so we're checking to see if our is cursor active variable is equal to true inside this else statement we want to reset the lock state so that our cursor is no longer locked. So I have cursor dot lock state equals cursor lock mode dot none. Outside this else statement we then have another if statement where we're checking to see if our escape menu variable does not equal null. And this will be so that we can have a menu that pops up when we press the escape key. And so inside this if statement we have escape menu dot set active and we're passing in our is cursor active variable. After this we need to create an awake function so I have void awake and inside this awake function we need to initialize our general input variable so I have general input equals new and then general input with parentheses and a semicolon. We then need to register the script to the callback function so I have general input dot general controls which is our action map 
dot set callbacks and I'm passing in this. Once we've created this awake function, we then need to create an on enable function. So I have void on enable. Inside this function, we need to enable the callbacks. And so we have general input dot general controls dot enable. We can then copy this on enable function and paste it down below and then change it from an on enable function to an on disable function and change the enable to disable. Once we have this, there's some code that we need to set in the start function. So here in the start function, we need to set the initial visibility of our cursor. So I have cursor.visible equals, and we're setting it equal to is cursor active, but I think I'm actually going to change this to false. We then have cursor.lockState, and I also want to set this to locked. And so I have cursor lock mode dot locked. We then have an if statement where we're checking to see if our escape menu does not equal null. If it does not equal null, then we want to set escape menu dot set active and we want to pass in false just to make sure that it's not active. Once we have all of this, we can then save the script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we need to create a new game object to hold this script. And so here I have this empty game object, which I've named game controller, and then I've dragged on our cursor lock script. Now, if I want to create an escape menu game object, I can go to our canvas. I'm going to right click on it. I'm then going to go down to UI and select panel. We can then create just a text field onto this panel. And I'm going to then edit this text so that it says escape menu. Now your escape menu is going to look a lot different than mine of buttons on it to leave the game and so on. But once you've created your escape menu, you can then just drag it into our escape menu variable. And then let's go ahead and play this game and see if it works. All right. And so immediately you can see that I don't have my escape menu active anymore. And as you can see, I no longer have a cursor, which is a lot better. It's less annoying. And then when I press the escape key, you can see that our escape menu pops up and my cursor appears. Now, one thing that you might want to add in is a condition that makes it so that your other input controls for your first person controller stops working when your escape menu is active. But there you go. We now have a working cursor lock feature. All right, so that's everything that we're going to cover in this quick tutorial on how to create a cursor lock script for our first person controller. Now, just a reminder, if you go to the corresponding post for this tutorial on our website, you'll be able to find all of the code for this cursor lock script. And you can find a link to that post in the description below. Now, make sure that you like this video and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server so that you can get help from our community. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>